uh, yellow <coughs> the circle describes the technologies available uh, in each locations. Uh, like we have, for example, uh, in this uh, our in, in our session today, and uh, uh, then uh, is the uh, uh, green uh, circle which describes the social environment in its locations. In order to design and understand uh, collaboration requirements, we have to understand the local conditions from this. Uh, 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 four point of view because uh, the task complexity and contextual complexity they re, they uh, create demands to, to collaboration and, and interaction uh, processes uh, between these people participating uh, to the work and these three factors task complexity contextual complexity and interaction processes create the outcomes and uh, how well uh, uh, how innovate, innovative the and product is, how effective the work is, and uh, etc. So this has been our, our uh, uh, large frame, although we have very much been concentrating on, on technologies in, in the study. <coughs> um, okay, I will finalize my, my presentation by uh, two examples. Uh, one concerns uh, uh, cross case study um, causing 11, 11, 11 companies. Uh, we made an, uh, <coughs> uh, altogether 12 cases in pro, from these 11 companies studying uh, what kind of uh, 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 tools they are using uh, when uh, collaborating globally. So all these uh, 11 companies were Finnish global companies. And uh, in this uh, table, you can you can see uh, uh, the tools they are using uh, for for communication, for uh, for information and knowledge sharing, for coordination of their their work, for cooperation their work, and to uh, for uh, maintaining a group spirit uh, in, in their team, and. Uh, uh, we can go uh, into details uh, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, frequencies in numbers in uh, parentheses show the frequency uh, of tool used. Uh, so for example, email uh, parentheses 12 means that in all of these cases emails were used. But in all, uh, we can see that um, there are very basic type of, of tools. Uh, in, in, in use and, and mainly very traditional one and uh, what is our very simple simple uh, uh, conclusion is that uh, um, uh, integrated uh, tool sets are uh, mostly missing and uh, need of, of uh, of, of the uh, development. Okay, uh, this um, we also studied uh, challenges uh, when using these these tools, and uh, uh, again we can't go in deeply into detail. You can uh, luckily look these these pictures also later, but um, uh, well, Rafi said there's a lot of technological uh, challenges uh, uh, but uh, different uh, tools uh, create uh, in fact different uh, uh, challenges <laughs> although the uh, question or, or challenge of, of too many um, uh, emails and uh, 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 breakdowns of, of uh, 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 inter in internet uh, connections, uh, etc. Et, et okay, and <coughs> uh, finally, um, uh, an example of uh, more more wide uh, um, giving more wide uh, picture of facilitating and inhibiting factors in global teamwork. 
this is one of the cases studied uh, in more, more details. We used this uh, 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 four, uh, four circle model to analyze uh, uh, and identify facilitating and inhibiting factors. And uh, this case was uh, the software development team in Swedish uh, telecom company called uh, Svico. And um, they had uh, particip uh, employees working in, in uh, Sweden and uh, in India. And so we interviewed uh, 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 three, three uh, people in India and four in Sweden to, to found what kind of uh, facilitating and inhibiting factors they, they have in their work. And here are the, the uh, spaces to be seen. Well, first, facilitating factors. Um, the main um, uh, facilitating uh, factor was uh, certain specific competencies uh, of, of persons, like cultural understanding and, and uh, co communication uh, uh, capabilities. <coughs> there were other uh, uh, other facilitating factors uh, which can be put to different uh, uh, spaces, as you can see, like, uh, um, uh, for example, in, in virtual spaces, uh, uh, there are certain uh, uh, strengths of uh, ICT uh, tools uh, as well. Uh, what was facilitating was uh, uh, on social space was good sp team spirit, uh, social support from 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 uh, group team members wherever they are, and a trustful uh, atmosphere uh, there. Inhibiting factors. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the main one was in incompatible toolset between uh, stakeholders, and some others uh, as well, like uh, in social space, uh, language uh, barriers between uh, to underst Indians understanding Swedish and Swedish understanding uh, Indians when, when talking about joint. Uh, as well, we found out a kind of mixed factor, which, which, which means that uh, uh, they, they were both strengths and weaknesses in this, uh, this uh, these uh, issues, like uh, uh, the main controversial kind of, of factor is the company uh, policy, because there's always some s small strengths, but also a lot of weaknesses in, in the policy level of, of, of the company. So uh, I will finalize my, my talk here, here now, uh, because of very strict time limits we have here, and uh, Hopefully, uh, we can come back to these, these issues in the, the final discussion today. Thank you very much. So good evening, um, and thank you, Matti, for your presentation. Uh, next up is me. My name is Eero Palomäki, and I did a case with Emma Nordback and Johan Lundblad about ABB. ABB, and we had AAC Global uh, as well as partner in this in this case. And the case was about global product transfer knowledge portal. So. Let's take a look about a uh, look in this case. So here on this slide, you can see on the left side the uh, case description. So ABB is uh, here. One product they make is like um, electrical engines or motors, and they want to uh, transfer the know-how how to produce these kind of products from Finland to China in this case. So on the left side, you can see 
uh, in, in uh, the upper part you can see fin Finland and China. And then there's the project organization. Uh, so there are two, two teams, one in Finland and one in China. And you can see the project managers sending and receiving there on the blue. And they both have teams, uh, one team in Finland and one team in China. And there are different roles like logistics and uh, marketing and uh, buy, buying and so, so on. So this is the, like the mirror organization built for this product transfer project. And on the right you can see the program level management as well. So this uh, pro, uh, he, he, he or she has uh, like a portfolio of these projects and he needs the visibility to see where, where each of these projects is, is um, what, what state status they have. And the orange arrows on the left side, uh, they represent a need to share information or communication. So it can be achieved by different tools. So you can see there are, there are local, local needs to communicate between the teams. And then the project managers have a need to communicate between each other and it's quite a big need. And then uh, in addition, there are uh, the mirror roles communicate uh, from one side or uh, uh, one side of the project to another. And then there's the one extra arrow to the right to the program management. So, so this project has the need to communicate the status. So this is this is like the case environment, and I said that we are, uh, we did look this case from the point of view of the SharePoint portal used to uh, share information in this environment. And on the right side, you can see the four quarters or the four environments where the each worker is present in this case. So Matti already. Uh, told a little bit about these physical, virtual, mental and social environments. And when we think about the portal and the usefulness and of the portal, how well it's suited to the task it's uh, meant to be, we need to remember that it's only one part of the environment where the workers uh, work. So we need to understand all of these four, four spaces around the worker to uh, evaluate the portal. And there are some extra challenges in this, this kind of project as, as the project lifetime is quite short from 6 to 12 months and uh, lots of the people are using their non-native language like English to communicate here and there are two teams, two different countries, two different cultures, all the participants are really busy and they have different experience from the company and the production and they might not have a shared work history together these two teams so these create challenges. So I divided the uh, case for two, four research questions, uh, research question one, two, three, and four. And uh, we'll go the case through by these questions. So the first one is what are the collaboration challenges in the case? And then by that we can look more detailed uh, what, what was the task suitability of the portal, how well it was suited to the need. And then we looked into having these two different cultures and how they affected the distributed collaboration. And finally, uh, some suggestions to how to get the project participants use the portal more and better based on the interviews. And as data, we collected uh, during six months uh, interview data from 19 participants. And they had different roles in this project in Finland, Poland, Sweden, and China. So we had some extra countries as well. So let's go to the first research question. <coughs> So communication tools used in the project, uh, the available tools were phone, email, same time, visits for to the different country and different kind of portals. So this project portal, but then some other portals as well. And the employees choose uh, from this availability portfolio of tools uh, based on task priority, time of the day, uh, which organizational unit they belong. So designers use different kind of, kind of tools than the project managers. Uh, what communications tools were used before the transfer project. Uh, language skills of the workers. Their contact network, how familiar the other person is. And then or also based on the, if it's uh, concerning free time or work topic. The, so are they using chat or email. Some challenges present here with the tools were time zones zones, shaky phone lines, understanding written versus spoken English, language skills. And then as in the turbulent world, there are lots of role and personal uh, changes. 
in uh, all companies and these break the contact networks that people build. So another view to this uh, first research question. So uh, here, here is one way to see the project organization. So the big circle is the APP global organization. And then we have the sending unit and the receiving unit. And in this virtual team that these two teams uh, form, they need to like bridge their differing organizational practices uh, together to overcome the challenges. So for example, they had differing prioritizations, support response times, norms, supplier lead times, and some differing regulations from the country governments. And these create challenges for the virtual team leader and members as they live in a little bit different reality, each of the teams. And still, they, for example, they make the documentation and the guides, for example, in Finland, and they need to do it for the other environment. <coughs> so the next research question was how well the portal is suited for the task. And uh, in general, it can be said that the quality and the implementation of the portal is good for sharing information. But then there were other things that created the challenges. So there were other tools and practices in place. So e some people perceived email faster and simple than the portal. And also there were already local portals used for sharing and communication before, before implementing this portal. And as this project is quite separate for their, um, their work, so no, not all the employees see, see it as a as their main main task, so they they prefer to use their previous tools. And the portal was good for collecting information from people, for example, reporting work hours. And these kind of purposes, they force people to visit the portal regularly, but still the frequency of the usage was quite low. Um, and the portal and the project model in this case were mainly seen as a tool for the project manager and the upper management and it, they were not so relevant for other team members' daily work. For example, there's one quote, the main purpose for this portal is for the project manager. For a project member, I just do my own work. And this creates some challenges how to support the implementation of these kind of tools because the motivation of the people or the understanding of the people of the project model can be limited. But the project managers, uh, they edit files in the portal and then can, they can find the work hour reports in one place easily. And they like these functionalities and the portal works here as expected. But however, as Matti already uh, in this previous slide said that the SharePoint portals can have some uh, trouble finding on organization information, the same challenges were present here. As, and one of the reasons was that the structure of the portal was based on the project model uh, gate product, gate model, but this model was not quite relevant to the, some of the people involved in the project, so they didn't know the uh, gate model so well to, and it created the structure of the portal to be a little bit confusing for them. The next research question was about cultural differences, and it can be said that they framed the collaboration here. I just pick up some some issues, so the way of working. Um, there were some differences reported, but almost everyone said that not so many cultural differences were present that would affect the daily work. And especially the Chinese people who had worked in foreign companies before ABB, they adapted well to the global teamwork. Language was mentioned often, but no major problems were found. And one way to make it easier was writing down when in doubt to what, what was said. And it could be said that uh, shyness, politeness, and losing face of the Chinese people, these features, and they affected the communication situations more than the language skills. Um, one, one thing that shapes the working environment in China are, is the hierarchical boss subordinate relationships. So the Chinese people work very much for their supervisor. And as the, this kind of project, the separate pro project organization, they may, might have problems to motivate the people to work for the project, as it's, it's not their daily work or it doesn't come from their own boss. And this also keeps the vision of the uh, employees quite restricted, and they don't see the bigger picture of the project very well. Um, 
Chinese people also have this feature of uh, losing face, so they are a little bit, they don't want to get embarrassed or how, how could it be described. And this leads to that they are a little bit afraid to announce their own mistake and they fear they're losing their jobs. So uh, it can be uh, a hindrance to open open information and sta status sharing and can create a little bit problems. And they want uh, detailed instructions because they first of all they work a lot of according to instructions and they will not uh, question or challenge the instructions so much and uh, maybe in Finnish culture people apply more and it's also related to that in the Finland Finland factory the experience of the people was a lot more than in the China factory so it's easier to make decisions and apply than in China so last research question number four, uh, how to support the parties of, how participants to use the portal more and better. So there are like three, three different um, advices. First, uh, we would need to improve the perceived usefulness of the portal. So not only thinking about the project managers, but all the, all the team members. So each of the participants should understand the benefits the portal brings to he or his department. Um, and it's not always clear if the portal is in use for, for the like project managers or for each of the participants, but there should be found some reasons for each, each one to, to uh, make the use of the portal good for them. So maybe, maybe someone uh, could see the schedule of the project better so he can uh, more easily prepare for the lead time of the suppliers, for example. And also, as many tools are in use uh, locally in the local teams, so then the roles and purpose of each of these tools and portals should be defined better. So, uh, do people know what, what's the purpose of each of the po uh, portals or systems? And second point is that we need to improve the perceived ease of use. So, um, it should be easy to use the tool, and one of the reasons why why people said that it should be easier is maybe the structure that's based on the gate model as described earlier. So one, one way to perceive the, uh, increase the perceived ease of view would be to train the project model a little bit better and make it more relevant for the team members. And another one is to enter a good start and good first impression. So all the logins, actions and documents should be ready when the project starts for the members. And using good servers and access smooth and speedy operation of the portal should be ensured. So it should not be uh, seen as a slow or so. And the third one is we need some to give, to give some time to uh, increase the usage. So like the, um, during the project, uh, we, we did some interviewed some people two times in the spring and in the autumn. And during the summer, they had used the portal uh, a lot. So the attitude and understanding of the meaning, they increased uh, do, uh, through the usage. So the usage helped people to understand what's, what's good. And the project manager influence on the usage is major. So the portal was a lot used when the project manager asked. But maybe the project managers should ask more often if they have such an influence on the people. And the uh, portal usage has been made a measurable goal of the project, but the question could be how to make it a personal goal for all the project members. And this is the final slide, and it's, 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 uh, it's one uh, implementation model, and it could describe the case. So on the left side, if I go through the boxes and the model, there's the system quality and the information quality, and then they lead to the use and user satisfaction. And here, in this part, the users uh, spend some time and it will lead to individual impact and then later in the organization of impact and benefits. And if you think about the portal and the system quality, the, it seems okay for knowledge sharing, but then the information quality would be the point where we could get some benefits. So we could improve it by explaining the meaning of the portal on, and the model, sharing the experiences from peers and uh, increasing the project model understanding so the structure would be more clear, clear for the people and then we can give the users some one or two projects that they use the portal and they get satisfaction 
and it will lead to individual impact and later on to the organizational impact. Of course, you can get some benefits already now, but it will increase increase uh, with time. And that would conclude the case. Thank you very much, Eero. And Kim, I'm going to make you presenter. Please share your slides and uh, turn on your mic. Hello, Kim. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Hello. Good, great. Okay. Um, thank you, Eero, for the presentation. Uh, I have to say that I, I agree most of the issues and then I can see that there are a lot of cultural issues can be seen behind the answers and, and uh, I've been traveling in, in different locations and uh, some of the responses are exactly the same and, and uh, in some countries or cultures uh, they are also opposite, so the local culture and local way of working affects a lot on the result and, and also the collaboration. So roughly that's the conclusion, but I, I think I, I, I would I show a couple of slides and I believe that I, I, I give answers or at least some different thoughts on, on the complete package also in a different way. So as mentioned earlier, uh, I'm, I'm working as a senior consultant and I've been working with APP for a couple of years and uh, uh, conducted uh, quite a lot of training courses on, on product transfers, whether they are expansions or transfers or greenfields and, and uh, there are roughly five to six countries also that I'll be working in and uh, there are a lot of similar issues in there. But anyway, let's go further. The the whole idea basically starts from this frame and um, they had a clear idea of expanding the footprint by having production and, and uh, in different location and many transfers. So aim is to have same standards, production processes, quality materials and so on in different countries. So. Uh, First conclusion is that they are unprepared. They, as an organization, they don't have the structure, they don't have the tools nor resources, so something has to be done. So um, uh, we started the development where the focus was to create a concept, systematic concept for technology and competence transfers. And uh, transferring the global know-how and also the best practices to multiple countries, not only China, as a was based on this interview. So this is roughly roughly the starting point and uh, some flexibility has to be there because each country is different, uh, there's different localization requirements, manufacturability is different, supply chains are quite different, uh, even the production ramp up are done a completely different way. Some challenges are also also mentioned in, in the left bottom corner that we've been, we've been recognizing. But this is the, the background and uh, there was a good comment saying that um, people are not aware of, of the gate model and uh, they are not familiar with that. That was a, actually one of the key foundations for, for the project itself once the R&D or product development process was closest to product transfers, having similar gates, having similar phases and also tasks. So that's why it was chosen to be there and then it, it was clearly noticed that there are plenty of people that haven't ever even worked with the gate model before so there has to be a learning curve. But we created a toolbox on, on there and uh, what we were discussing on, on this Eros presentation is all on, on the right side. So the projects portal is just one port part of, of the toolbox. So um, it started in the beginning collecting a lot of best practice templates from different organizational units and different locations and, and uh, then we have done a lot of work in there. Then we focused on different roles and especially the work in between the gates which are, are uh, especially 
used for decision making and also risk assessment. So we focused on, on the work done in DTV and created uh, training materials uh, for um, management, uh, for project managers, for introducing the concept, for simulating the, the concept in, in the workshops for sending and receiving units and then there were also SharePoint training courses included, so there are a lot of material available in there. Uh, training that we did were more or less facilitated workshops, and on the next slide I'll show a couple of examples what it is. And we used the step-by-step, roll-by-roll model um, to go through an ideal product transfer. So the basic idea basically should have been there. Uh, at this moment I have to say that most of the training that I've been conducting is, is focused on product manage, uh, project managers and uh, you can see that also on, on the responses, meaning that their job is also to train the team members the way they want to work on, on the project. Two outcomes. There was some comment about work instructions, so we have been working heavily on on uh, sharing knowledge on uh, on on a separate portal where instructions and then tools and videos and all those are available for different work phases, and they are integrated with the work instructions also. Then um, the last part is is this projects portal, which is focused on sharing project related information. So nothing else than that. The, the main idea there it was the, the project and portfolio management, so as mentioned earlier, the key users are the project mani managers and also the upper management, so that was, should obviously be one of the results also there. For team members, uh, the document management as SharePoint is designed for was was the main function in there, and if you just be part of one project, most probably you are not the daily user of SharePoint, and uh, that may create difficulties in, in especially in in the usage. But let's go further. This is one example, and the idea there is to go through the concept and model, agree tasks, agree schedule, create clearly a common understanding and communicating the project plan. Eero mentioned about the mirror organization and we put the same functions from sending and receiving unit working together and that creates a conflict immediately. And it's, it's about solving the conflicts and then making a common agreement. You can see that there's intense discussions all ongoing in these pictures. And these are our project managers from different parts of the organization. This is Europe both. But anyway, that's the, the mainly the idea there. And once, once you have had a workshop, face-to-face -face meeting, it would be rather easy to work on and by using different communication methods later on. Not only SharePoint, because it, it wasn't even, even designed in the full extent for, for the to be part of the communication. Um, let's go further. I'm not going through these objectives. I believe that I also mentioned them. But there are a couple of challenges that I, I also saw that uh, the local culture, local practices has a great influence. But also the roles are quite different in, in different countries. And same applies about the ICT tools. Typically, they are just local, and, and uh, they are not even designed for global use. So that creates a immediate challenge. Uh, the gate model uh, was already mentioned, but then prioritization was clearly one of the problems, also challenges in there. There are local functional tasks that. Uh, has the highest priority, especially in China, but also in other countries like Poland, Italy, and even Estonia, compared to projects. Then a lot of undocumented tacit knowledge 
in each of the function, in each of the person. So unlearning and, and uh, sharing information is one of the key challenges in there. And then a comment about that not a single concept fit for all purposes. And then a couple of comments. This is the final, final comment from my side. Um, corporate culture, local culture is always, it requires time. And uh, the earlier you can start the introduction, the better it is. But if you start too early, most probably then the, the message is meaningless and, and so some balance has to be there. One of the key issues <clears throat> based on, on the train the trainers concept is that the project manager's role and experience has a great influence on, on the success. And that's 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 clearly clearly uh, one of the focus and then, uh, I've seen good projects and bad projects and this, this makes the difference in there. Uh, a strong leader or project manager definitely provides constant support for the team members. There are fair rules on communication and, and uh, clear guidance also. And uh, this will give a uh, basis for, for good team working and, and uh, even despite the culture or whatever differences there may be between the participants. Then we have a couple of comments about also that the collaboration skills and a virtual working needs to be improved. That's a common statement and uh, can be clearly seen in there. And also then discipline, uh, we can work a lot smarter, not harder. And uh, uh, I'm referring to using templates and avoiding email for, for sharing versions and benchmarking and there's a lot of lessons learned available. So I would say that as, as a con conclusion that um, the portal itself has provided huge awareness among the management and recognition among the projects and, and uh, on a higher level. And it has also provided a lot of transparency in between the projects and then there has been quite a lot learning at least on, on or, uh, with certain countries or certain project management. So, so some benefits has been there, but also there are, there are a lot of people that uh, are not using it daily and then that creates the problem. At the moment there are roughly 300 users, there are over six, 60 projects and then 10 countries involved, so it's quite a network anyway already. So that's my comment in, in as a response to Eero's presentation. Thank you very much, Kim. Uh, very useful insights uh, that are supported by so many cultural studies. Uh, we will move on uh, to our next uh, presenter, uh, who will be Pekka. Okay, thank you Renate and Kim. Uh, I was listening to Kim's presentation. I think that this is quite aligned with, with uh, this, this case and, and also the previous ones. So what I will talk with you is about facilitating ideation in innovation process. And this presentation is going to be uh, divided into three parts. So first I will discuss a bit about the uh, actual research, what we have done. And secondly, I will describe the first results of the research as academic journal uh, or becoming, becoming academic journal publication. And finally, I will give a word to Olli Kuismonen, who is our very, very great uh, corporate partner. So we will um, uh, hear his insights as well. But uh, to begin with, here we go. So we, uh, our partner company, Conecranes, utilizes a global idea management system, which is uh, quite widely used in the corporation and it's established system, one might say. 
And the purpose is to capture the ideas of the person also that people can fed in ideas and comment and rate and so on. But we noticed with Oli that there might be some room for improvement, the system and the processes and functionalities around the system. Uh, first, uh, starting with communication and mutual understanding. Secondly, distributed decision making. And to illustrate these uh, difficulties, uh, we might have some very great ideas fed in, in some remote site of Conocrain's cooperation, for instance from Mexico. And then the ideas will be rated and rated and assessed in Hyvinka, and it's quite often the case that people might, might not understand each other full, and then they might end up with abandoning very good ideas or rejecting good ideas and accept something which is invented here. And um, so our research question was that how uh, collaboration tools and communication patterns can support the innovation process. And we decided to get three edges to that question. First, this effective usage of a concurrent uh, web conferencing system they were using, and they were recognized in, in using this mix of link system. And secondly, we de decided to uh, set up a completely new technology, this 3D virtual world, and see what happens when people get around and uh, be creative in virtual environment. And last, we decided to introduce these brainstorming uh, systems, how might they they nourish the creativity around the cooperation. And this slide describes our research setting in what happened since. So we had 10 mix of link sessions in which Conecrens' teams were collaborating around an idea in which the idea uh, included some kind of potential for misunderstanding. For instance, that now uh, no one really knows what the idea is about or there's some unsure in the air. And secondly, we had this brain merge sessions, six all together, in which Conecrens' teams uh, were asked to pilot the system and, and uh, uh, in, in a sense that they selected a question in which they tried to find solution by brainstorming. And finally, this virtual world 3D ICC or immersive turf was introduced so that teams were asked to collaborate and ideate in virtual world in the sense that they, might, uh, they were asked to have a meeting and, and process some tasks they were engaged in their current work. And in terms of data collection, we ended up with more than 20, hour, 20 hours, I'm not sure if it's even 30 hours of material uh, concerning collaboration. And we also decided to hand out a survey right after the uh, sessions in all the cases. So that same survey after link sessions, same survey after brain merge, and same session, uh, same form after, after this 3D ICC sessions. And these were the teams we addressed in the survey, like engagement and, and expectations of, of people, what they had, and also these global outcome judgments, that what did they get out from the system. And finally, we collected some corroborating data, which is like a backup for us to uh, see if our assumptions are correct in terms of the primary data sources. So we uh, investigated Conocrens' idea management system, the cases and what's inside, inside concerning our, our uh, cases and materials. And also we interviewed and discussed quite, uh, quite a lot with Conocrens' innovation department. And this slide is about our data, well, data analysis, what we did. did. So beginning from the left-hand side, we have the a cut of transcribed discussions uh, with, with which we have more than two, uh, 20 hours. So it's quite a lot in, in terms of Excel, draws and typing and so on. Then moving to right, we have these uh, graphs indicating the coding we have made according to the uh, transcriptions. So we, uh, each chunk we had or each turn in the, in the uh, sessions we coded them with two, two different coding schemes to indicate that what does the, what were people saying and what does that represent in a large and more theoretical terms. And also this lingographic rep representations was used 
so to <clears throat> indicate the turn taking and and other other measurements which were present and relevant for the case and also this survey analysis which is not included in this this slide but sure we analyzed carefully the results of the handed out surveys and yes so this was actually the part what we did in in terms of research and then moving on to the results of first results of the of the uh, research i might introduce this this uh, headline artifacts facilitation and transformative interaction experiences in distributed design collaboration to start with uh, we decided to frame a context of design thinking into this issue so that as a part of or like as a lens to product development process uh, design thinking uh, sees the world or design or product development process as an iterative staged process model so we start from the identifying of users need what does the user actually need or what what uh, what does he need but he can't say it or some something like that and then we start by uh, widening the possible solutions for the need so that uh, maybe even the all possible needs or all possible solutions to that single problem and after we have this solution space or problem space widened we narrow it so that we end up with maybe one or two or a couple of, of possible solutions to that problem uh, embraced from the user and finally we decide the solutions to go on as a product development and then test how did it work, was good or not, and finally we try to learn in a form of an empathy, right? so that what did the user like it and was it good or not. And as uh, embracing from, from the research project itself, we consider this design thinking uh, as a global uh, operation nowadays and it's increasingly global, or becoming global. And uh, we applied the uh, concept of boundary objects and effective facilitation practices in both environments, or in, in link and in, in virtual worlds. So uh, in terms of boundary objects, uh, uh, as an example of it, it might be this slideshow. So that I have some knowledge which uh, uh, concerning this research, which you might not have. So we have a, a knowledge barrier between us and this slide set, uh, slide set uh, tries to overcome that barrier by, by telling what it's about. And this facilitation, which Kim, Kim Kajasela also, also discussed, is about directing or improving the team's performance in a meeting. So that, for instance, Renata is facilitating this, this meeting quite effectively. effectively and, and that's a good example in that sense. So uh, in terms of research questions, we decided to <coughs> compare this uh, a mix of link or web conferencing environment with this virtual world and see how do the environments or the discussion within the environments differ in terms of artifacts as boundary objects and also how does the role of facilitation, facilitator and tasks of facilitator differ between these environments. And to continue with the results about boundary objects, we noticed that we have actually some objects that are common to both environments. And then we have ob objects only for virtual world and only for web conferencing system, or primarily for those. And to begin with the common, uh, common boundary objects, uh, in both environments, people engaged in idea development of, or researching uh, they wanted to present and they wanted to co-author so that we have we had images and drawings and video clips and documentation and text and whiteboards and so on and people sketched and co-wrote and annotated it so that they they tried to uh, overcome the barriers of knowledge via those factors in both both environments but in virtual world including 3d environment 
we noticed that first people were allowed to uh, uh, to process multiple boundary objects at the same time so that me and Renate might have uh, observed one boundary object or one documentation and then uh, Matti and Eero were engaged in some other object or discussion and also in that sense that people were able to switch quite fastly between the objects unlike in web conferencing system and so we noticed that the environment itself or the virtual world itself might work as a boundary object directing the group's meeting for instance and <clears throat> in web conferencing system we noticed the richness of epistemic objects or metaphors used in the discussion and so it might be the case that as the visual experience is not that uh, strong in web conferencing system compared in a in 3D immersive virtual world like surrounding us it somehow reflects on people's speech so that they start by uh, addressing quite a lot of uh, textual metaphors to uh, to get each other understand each other and yes this facilitation so uh, according to uh, uh, existing literature we decided to divide facilitation into technical process and content, in content interventions and we noticed that the facilitation interventions itself they are quite similar in both environments so that uh, similar technical guidance for instance is given notwithstanding the fact that it's on web conferencing system or in virtual world but what was interesting was that the uh, amount of facilitation or of certain interventions it it was quite different so that for instance the technical facilitation was very very strong in in virtual world on contrary process facilitation was more uh, uh, was more frequent in in uh, this web conferencing system and this uh, came to the fact that uh, we noticed that the uh, users uh, in a link or the web conferencing system were quite routinized in in the collaboration with that medium on the other hand virtual world was new to mainly all of the attendees and we noticed that people indicated according to our survey that they ended up with quite similar performance and we decided to ask why because it's somehow counterintuitive so that people managed to overcome the barriers of learning in this this case and finally our conclusions we noticed that we have in terms of global collaboration we had tools and we had practices to contribute towards this distributed ideation first uh, beginning from the tools the collabor collaboration environment can itself support the interaction and ideation process by introducing different boundary objects and allowing people to use different kind of boundary objects within the presentation and also also uh, to continue with that different environments might support different kind of activities and that's something we might we might work work on more in the future and on the other hand we have this practices part so that this facilitation might have overcome the barriers of learning in this case so that when people were given a good real-time guidance how to operate the system they are able to operate the system, a new system quite as good as the, uh, they are using a recognized or a very well-known collaboration system and uh, well also this process facilitation was noticed to help help the team to overcome the barriers of the distributed setting so that when they are given guidance that how to collaborate in in remote setting when when people are in Europe and America and so on uh, process facilitation might be a, some some kind of guideline to to employ Thank you very much. And Oli, I'm going to uh, unmute you and make you presenter. Go ahead, Oli. I want to hear your voice. Can you hear me? 
Yes, we can. Thank you very much. Okay, nice to uh, almost uh, see everyone. Um, I don't have anything to present. I, I just wanted to uh, say a few words uh, about, about the project. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm Oli Kuisman from Conecrain's uh, Innovation Manager and uh, I'm re responsible for the innovation uh, work in the company. And as, as Pekka uh, said, uh, we have uh, had some interesting uh, tasks or interesting uh, experiments going on in uh, in the world of, of innovation and, uh, and and one of the key key things uh, I wanted to say about the uh, about the project uh, that that we actually uh, quite early <coughs> early uh, realized uh, that it's not so much about the tool or the tools are are are, are a way to do something but it's much more a psychological process uh, than than not than so much a, uh, a, a, a sort of a linear uh, um, I don't know, uh, uh, an information process. It's uh, it it uh, tends to or, or seems to uh, have have quite uh, many uh, sort of human uh, rela related things uh, into it, because it's uh, it's it's an unlinear process, and uh, and and unless we want to uh, encourage or or build on on only these type of one man shows where where there's an Einstein in in the chamber. Uh, and and uh, you know doing the invention by themselves, uh, we need to get uh, collaboration uh, working. And uh, it has been interesting to get uh, get the buy-in in the organization for these different experiments. At times we've had successes, and and, and at some sometimes people have uh, have declined uh, to be part of be part of our our project uh, because they are busy. Obviously, and that's one of the one of the things that we are we are working on on in innovation space um, in in other fields as well. Uh, there's a, a huge amount of people uh, in the organization uh, in different parts of the world uh, who have uh, really good good ideas and uh, and the, and the challenge is to get their ideas uh, conveyed to the uh, to the to the for example product managers or, or or other decision makers in some other part of the of the organization, because uh, the 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 insight, the the aha, the eureka uh, effect doesn't really transfer over email, or it might actually be the worst thing uh, we can do is to is to uh, describe the idea in in text format and send an email to to some some other person who really doesn't understand where this idea came from, what's it related to, and and uh, and and sort of has the Possibility to to uh, view it from 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 his own uh, eyeglasses or or way of, of, of looking at the world. So uh, understanding the process has been has been uh, really really interested. I'm not sure if we found any any silver bullet yet, so that we we now know how to how to do things uh, perfect all the time. But uh, but uh, some some uh, interesting uh, results. Results and actually quite fun. At, uh, at uh, during the during the process, so we've had uh, some young and enthusiastic uh, engineers playing uh, around in uh, in, a, in a virtual world and and, and getting getting uh, positive uh, positive responses uh, from doing so. It's it's been it's been interesting. Thank you, Oli. So, so actually, uh, if you guys want to take over. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, and uh, we are going to move to uh, Petri, and I'm going to make him presenter. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you for all of the previous presenters. Uh, uh, my name is Petri Mannonen and I'll go through the research case we did with METSA Automation and UPM. And it's uh, related to uh, industrial uh, maintenance and support services and, and new ways of, of uh, both uh, building and, and providing them. And uh, the background uh, for the case and for the research is in, in current ways of organizing industrial maintenance and support and, and 
uh, if we go through this uh, kind of rough image or sketch of the current base from from left left to right in the left side there are the customers the factories basically in, in metro's case and then uh, the factories have uh, uh, experienced and, and specialized uh, workers like the operators and, and engineers and, and people like that and and then the companies that provide services maintenance and support services have a uh, local or or semi local maintenance people or support service people there who uh, provide services for one one or several factories in, in certain area physical area where they can actually actually move and, and cover cover the factories and, and meet with the people and then they can have kind of as a next layer of of the support organization the specialists who who support the maintenance maintenance people, the local or the field workers, a uh, few of them for each of the specialists. And then usually there is uh, uh, more or less global technical support centers uh, organized uh, often in, in a follow the sun, sun way, meaning that there are three to five technical centers globally so that uh, there is at least one, one technical center always available for the maintenance maintenance workers, the field workers, when they uh, encounter a problem. And then this kind of uh, organization is kind of uh, uh, designed to uh, not not do online or interactive collaboration, but pass the problem to next level when the solving of the problem takes, <coughs> takes too long. So when the field worker uh, has a problem that takes too long or is uh, in, in some other way too kind of big or too large to handle in the field, then he can pass the problem to specialist and, and then the specialist maybe the technical support centers. Uh, but the kind of interesting part of the research case is, is based of, on the uh, current trends which seem to uh, go towards a situation where we might have a, some kind of knowledge intensive distributed services and uh, Kind of main trends behind behind this development are the uh, intelligent and network equipment in factories, and then how those intelligent and networked equipment are becoming more and more relevant. And this means that uh, uh, it's possible to get more and more data online from from e smaller and smaller parts of the factories. And then, of course, there's uh, always the trend of aiming to higher and a higher level of automation. Uh, getting people to actually not do the uh, bas basic work but but focus on more abstract and more more difficult problems and then there has been this uh, trend uh, to uh, go from the kind of current situation awareness to kind of true control of processes and equipment and this is related to higher level of automation and more abstract level of, of working in the factories and then of course there always is is a kind of trend and aim to maximize the efficiency of human resources. And in, in industrial settings, this basically means that kind of the repetitive and, and basic tasks are automated and, and then the people can actually focus, focus on the difficult tasks. tasks. And, and the main challenge that, that comes when, when new services are built and uh, that utilize the new data and, and and perhaps utilize new ways, new ways of doing things, is that it's quite difficult to build and maintain the competence in the companies. And, and the traditional uh, hierarchical organization requires that, that the best or most expert problem solvers and, and uh, specialists are in the technical support center since the largest and most difficult problems will end up in there. But the, uh, when the development is fast enough, the best expertise actually is in the field since they are the workers who, who encode, encode the problems every day and who need to solve them. And it's really difficult to build, build and maintain the competence in the in kind of hierarchical organization in, in the way that uh, uh, working practices require in that kind of uh, organization. And that's why the case is kind of focused in this uh, huge vision of global network of experts and uh, this means that uh, that actually the field workers and, and even the customer workers operators and customer specialists and then maybe the even R&D 
people developing new, new uh, analysis tools and so on uh, can work as, as a network and not, not kind of hierarchical structure. And then the field worker is, is always in, uh, in charge of uh, uh, and, and leading the problem solving and, and he gets support from those people who, who has experience or who have time to, to actually support them. And then the, the support organization kind of needed for this, this network is, is focused on, on supporting the collaboration, the usage of collaboration tools and then uh, building the organizational learning, meaning uh, turning the cases, the uh, solved problems into re reusable, reusable cases and, and information that can be used in future problem solvers by the in future problem solving by the by the network of experts. And uh, the studied case uh, has been an emerging service uh, called Metsa Loop Monitoring, and it's uh, basically a proactive maintenance and optimization service for for process factories and uh, it can be divided in, in or it basically has two two major parts or components there is a uh, uh, automatic uh, kind of component level data collection and analysis uh, part that uh, identifies the suboptimal process areas and uh, emerging problems and and then there's uh, uh, high level of ex expertise needed to actually uh, understand uh, automatic analysis and then plan and execute changes in uh, needed in, in the factories and they can be uh, software updates, uh, they can be kind of uh, different uh, changes in, in maintenance plans and, and, and then they can be even some kind of changes in, in equipment in, in factories. And, uh, the main aims for, for this service is, of course, to, to have higher production, decrease in production and maintenance costs, increases in production quality, decreases in environmental emissions, for example, and, and, and of course, always improve the safety issues. So, kind of the aim of the service is same as in, in, in other uh, maintenance and, and, and support services that are provided for for industrial factories, but but the way of building the service or the new services is, is uh, built a bit differently, and, and this seems to be kind of one example. And then the technological changes kind of enable to start building new new kind of similar services, and uh, this is also a good example of how the expertise of solving the problems and plan and execute changes in factories based on the data is, is starting to emerge in, in the field operators and, and there aren't, aren't uh, people in, in technical support centers that can actually support, support the field workers uh, in traditional way. And uh, the kind of results of the case are, are threefold. Uh, we have identified uh, uh, collaboration uh, partners that the field workers currently have and or would need with this this service service and then we have identified the collaboration need needs what kind of collaboration is actually needed and, and conducted in, in during this kind of service and then based on those actually identified the requirements for changes in, in three level in, in personal working practices in, in organizational uh, practices and, and models and then in tools that are needed for example in the collaboration tools and so on. But the collaboration and cooperation partners, uh, the middle one, the field expert, uh, yeah, here I'm closer, uh, is basically the kind of problem owner and, and the key, key partner in, in this kind of problem solving and, and support service. And uh, the other, other partners in the ne network are both uh, customer workers and, and then the company, same company workers as the field experts. And from the customer side, there are the factory operators who actually know how the ordinary and mundane ta tasks in, in factories are, are done and, and what kind of situation there currently is going on. Then from the customer side, there are engineers and specialists who 
uh, focusing on, on certain parts of the process or for example optimizing certain things or, or future changes in, in, in production. And then of course the factory management and, and people who are responsible of uh, buying and obtaining these new services need to be taken into account. And then there can be, currently there aren't these kind of cases, but there could be uh, also customers from kind of other customers who already have this experience of this kind of problems or this kind of optimis optimization uh, tasks or, or projects could, that could actually participate in, in, in problem solving. But uh, currently there aren't any and, and there is a, quite a big barrier in, in this kind of collaboration since the factories can be actually competitors in, in, in business and in markets and, and there might be no motivation on helping one's competitors. On the service provider side, uh, in addition of the field expert who is, or field workers who, who is responsible of the problem or responsible of the optimization project, there are of course the other field workers working globally who might have experience on the same topic or, or topic that is useful for this, this problem. And then uh, uh, there are these global technical support centers. There always is need for some kind of background support. In, in this case, it perhaps is, as I said previously, more focused on, on support on using the collaboration tools and, and support on finding uh, information relating to earlier problem solving or earlier similar projects. That, that's not in, inside the network that's network of experts that's uh, solving this problem. And then there can be people from uh, service development side, people who are uh, focusing on, on building new services or, or improving the tools, analysis tools or data gathering tools that's used, that are used in, in the factory. So they can also participate in, in uh, uh, certain kind of problem solving. Meaning if there's a certain problem that's related or certain optimization pro project, uh, the uh, data analysis is a very important uh, part so they can actually help on, on explaining how the automatic system does the analysis currently and so on. The collaboration and cooperation needs uh, or the main needs, these are of course not kind of comprehensive list, but the main needs that, that uh, we dig up from, from the case study. Uh, first of all, there is a really need on, on keeping the focus on the main task, meaning keeping the focus on the problem solving and, and the current problem that has been identified or or otherwise found and uh, of course it can in addition there can be needs for searching new information sharing information and and uh, in collaboration structuring the information for the problem solving and then there are these adjoint tasks like learning from how certain expert is, is tackling a problem in, in in certain factory learning for future if if some expert knows that similar kind of task is coming from uh, those factories that he is or she is responsible on. And then information sharing and this is where the support functions for example can, can participate on early phases already collecting uh, information that, that would help on, on building the reusable cases for, 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 for databases and so on. Uh, second kind of collaboration, really straightforward collaboration need is to have these lightweight ways of uh, contacting available and, and potential uh, available people and people who potentially can help with problem solving. And, uh, and of course identifying and motivating the best available experts to participate in this, this, this current problem. And uh, then there's need to have a good control on information sharing and spreading. Uh, and as I say, this is uh, first of all related to the non disclosure uh, agreements, meaning that uh, since the customers, the different factories can be competing, uh, there's a need to keep certain information closed from, from other factories. And uh, at least current kind of uh, deals be between the service providers and the, and the factories can even prevent uh, sharing certain information inside the service providing organization. And then 
in, in from more from the organizational perspective, there is of course this need to organizational learning. And as I said earlier, this means basically building the reusable and findable information for for future cases and future future problem solving uh, situations. And these are uh, kind of uh, the uh, collaboration needs are quite similar for the current uh, hierarchical uh, organization, but but they become more kind of more and more faster needs and, and faster requirements. And for example, the uh, need to contact really straightforward and lightweight ways to contact and fast ways to contact uh, available people and, and best experts of certain certain kind of problems is something that the, the usual tools in, in many companies don't actually help on this, this task at all. And uh, from this we can, uh, as I said, kind of derive uh, new requirements for work practices and tools and here they are uh, divided in organizational, personal, and then technical level. Uh, in organizational level, uh, there's actually need to build kind of support and motivation for this kind of shared problem solving. Currently, the problem solving is kind of really individual work, although there is al always interaction and collaboration and need, for example, to ask ask things from, from other people, but, but the problem belongs to basically one, one person or one, one unit or one, one level of hierarchy and, and others can can kind of forget it currently and uh, probably the kind of motivation and support that that's needed is for example related to how uh, good or uh, uh, good workers are rewarded from from doing a lot of problem solving and so on then the ne next uh, this kind of change requ requirement in organization level is automatizing the meta tasks and uh, in many ways the there are a lot of these kind of tasks like uh, billing related measurements and, and so on and uh, if we start focusing on, on this kind of uh, network collaboration and, and, and so on it becomes really difficult for individual people to keep track on, on all of the uh, projects and problem solving cases they have been uh, involved in and it, 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 the tools need to or the meta task of for example uh, keeping count on, on how much and what kind of uh, ta what kind of tasks the, the worker has done need to be somehow automatized. Otherwise, there will be a huge huge amount of overhead work for for everyone. Uh, and the third kind of main main change requirement is uh, related to building new new services. And uh, if the technical development uh, uh, based on those trends that I listed earlier really uh, changes the situation in such that new kind of services can can be these knowledge intensive services can be built uh, they will probably become a kind of advantage competitive advantage to to the service providing company and they need to start building a good capability to create data mining and analysis tools tools and, and new service development and in in worker or personal level uh, there, although a lot of uh, information already currently is, is kind of in digital form, a lot of problem solving practices actually are in, not in digital format, meaning that uh, workers keep notebooks and then uh, do, do things in analog world and, and if we want to have a, a really collaborative and shared problem solving uh, events and, and projects happening then we need to start actually doing everything in digital world so that everything can be shared. Another thing that's uh, needed and from the personal level is to change from the current really private way of working to more public way of working and this is related to same analog digital change uh, when when things are done in my own notebook I write down things and then think about them and, and solve some problems no one else can actually participate in, in really strong role in that uh, problem solving. Others can somehow follow and, and provide some related information but since they don't know what exactly I've been uh, thinking and, and doing they can't actually help me really good way if they are some, somewhere remote unless I do a lot of my, my work in public way meaning always keep my, my own notes and, and everything else available to others who are interesting or who are uh, somehow interlinked to this problem. 
And in, in, in tool level there, as I said already, there's need for, for this straightforward uh, uh, collaboration or starting the collaboration, meaning uh, con contacting people. And for example, social network tools are kind of good example from, uh, from uh, outside business world currently. Where, where social network tools are used to to uh, build build uh, ad hoc teams and then get uh, interested and, and and motivated people together to solve solve problems, and then there is also a need need for robust and flexible tools for information creation and sharing, and this doesn't mean that there aren't good tools available already in in, in companies, but but the many tools, as already mentioned in, for example, Matti's first presentation are really in general level, like, like emails and, and, and document sharing and so on. And, and there seems to be a need to actually start taking into account uh, the detailed tasks that people are doing and the, the really detailed things about the work. And, and, and there are special requirements of what kind of, for example, uh, drawings or images or uh, designs need to be shared, and then and the really general level tools don't don't support a good collaboration based on documents can be shared, but they can't be, for example, edited together and so on. And and then of course need for robust and flexible collaboration tools, meaning that there can be people who don't have a fast internet connection, but they still have valuable information or expertise on the problem, and there's need to actually somehow get them uh, in, into the problem solving project and, and, and team and involve them and, and have them uh, good access access to problem solving. And, and then of course relating to new services there's probably when there are knowledge intensive services there is the need to have the good analysis and data mining tools for the experts. But, but in, in this case there was and, and it was it was based on this this new New tools that that uh, Metso was able to able to uh, develop and, and the new services based on that. But but for new new services there might be need for new new tools uh, even on on new tool per per service in in some cases. And this is linked to the organizational kind of uh, requirement to build the capability to create these these tools. But uh, those are kind of the main main uh, and well a bit general level findings of the casework and uh, uh, actually I don't know if uh, Jani Honga was able to participate or not he sent me a message that he is he has some kind of scheduling problems but so probably we don't have a Metsos comment on this unless uh, Joni has some some thoughts but otherwise this uh, uh, well, uh, I, I guess this is the last last slide for, for this case. Very much, Petri. And uh, I'm going to uh, give all of you a possibility to talk in cyberspace. And I'm going to unmute uh, you in cyberspace so uh, you can uh, chime in. And uh, as we are moving into general discussion and reflection, uh, what I would like to do is uh, actually invite all of you to take a couple of minutes, maybe two minutes, a uh, quiet time to reflect and ask you the following. Um, please, everyone, kind of a veto decision here until everyone can uh, mute their own uh, mics and speakers. So the, the, what I would like uh, for you to do is to take a minute and actually uh, do the following. I'm 
going to create here a new slide. Uh, and I assume everyone can see my slide. And write down uh, what you liked. Hang on. Like what you still need and we didn't touch on, what you wish but is beyond the focus of uh, this current project but potentially a new project, and what you learned uh, through uh, these uh, series of presentations that you were not aware of or um, are happy to see that uh, your observations uh, were reinforced. And to see the conversation within three minutes, I'm going to go around uh, the table, the virtual table, and invite each of you to uh, share your thoughts. So take two minutes and write down some of your thoughts. <coughs> And in the meantime, I'm going to unmute the cyber people and ask you all to mute yourselves. So turn off your mics on your local machine. I'm <laughs>
Okay, so um, I'll go one. Uh, ah, we have one more uh, guest here at Stanford, Professor Kim Cho Long, my my colleague and partner in this uh, program. So we'll we'll go uh, one Stanford, one cyber, and I'm going to call out uh, who wants to go first from the local people. If not, I'm going to just call out names uh, and have the microphones ready. Actually, uh, Mati wants to offer. Go ahead, Mati. Okay, uh, I, I can start. So, uh, four answers. All right. Uh, what I, I have liked, I have to say, that um, to uh, co deep into the concrete concrete descriptions what is really happening on the on the field because i think that's the starting point not in, in a way starting from from the bottom to up not top down uh, uh, but what you um would need what, what i would need more is is to go um to get more uh, varied variable cases because now i think we have had uh, mainly quite demanding uh, type of like ideation and, and problem problem solving type of a task but uh, there are a lot of variance in in task uh, done in in global collaboration that I think uh, to, to get the real deeper and, and richer picture the variance of the cases could be could be larger and what would I w wish uh, is to go deeper to explore uh, the meaning of contextual factors, local ones. And it, it's it's hard task to do, in fact, but uh, it would be very very beneficial to do. And, and what I have learned, I think, during the process uh, and this, this project, I have really uh, uh, got a touch of, of meaning of artifacts and boundary object uh, in, in communication and collaboration. That, that has been something personally new to me. Okay, that's my... Thank you, Mati. Uh, Ingrid, why don't you go ahead? Ingrid, remember okay, thank you. to turn on your mic. I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Okay. Um, so I'll continue after Matti that uh, what I like really is that this in a way um, is mirroring what I experience at work as a both a researcher and a coordinator of new ways of working prototypes or trials that we have. So what I've seen in the results here is that really having the tools by themselves is not enough. You, uh, one of the presenters um, made a point that you need to include the personal motivations and the case presented um, that the tools in question, the portal, was being viewed as beneficial mostly for the project managers rather than for everybody. And so from that I'll move to what we need. As I was wondering whether in the last presentation um, it was mentioned that the social network and big data uh, mining and analysis um, is useful or has been viewed as useful outside the industry, but I was wondering whether you can take those connections as um, mapped in a social network inside the workspace or even people who are acquainted with each other outside the realm of work, whether you can take those connections and use them as opportunities for creating the motivations so that the tools that are being presented there uh, are used better or more. Then going to the wish, um, I know this is not, wasn't the scope of this project. Uh, the framework that Matti presented was uh, consisting of uh, four spaces and then the organizational context. So I wish to see um, perhaps in a continuation project or in a separate project, uh, TechS is now uh, starting a new program called LEADER, which is exploring the well-being, and one of those zones that Matti mentioned in the framework was about the mental space, So, uh, and well-being was uh, 
also listed as an outcome. So I was just, uh, I'm wishing that uh, investigations on that area and the interaction between those four zones in the organizational context and perhaps even between contexts, so between like the cases that we've seen could be further explored. And uh, finally what I've learned, but I wasn't familiar with the video protocol analysis, so the coding schemes were new to me and also as much to this uh, concept of uh, the boundary of and that's it for me. For now. Thank you very much, Ingrid. And we'll switch to Emma here. Continue, and I'll be really short. But um, what I liked, I liked the divergence of the cases. So we were able to take a detailed look at different kinds of aspects of virtual world. But still, there were some um, were commonalities, which leads me to the need. And I think it would be one concrete thing to do meta-analysis, for example, about the challenges of technology in virtual teamwork. And what I wish for is more larger scale studies, so we would be able to make broader generalizations. And well, I have learned a lot, but one thing is that technology and new ways of working, new, new practices are not implemented by themselves. <laughs> Thank you, Emma. And uh, Jacobson. Uh, I know somebody's using the Jacob, uh, I know Jacobson. Yes, uh, I'm I know. Yes, okay. uh, like Emma, I will do this shortly, as I was mainly as a listener and learner in this session. Uh, what I liked, I liked also the variation of the cases, that there were many kind of, and especially I liked this facilitation, uh, facilitating ideation and in innovation processes and that was actually uh, what I need is more about this kind of thing or this is what uh, what we are trying to do in our group work uh, trying to find a concept for uh, ideation in innovation processes and uh, for me more need I'm waiting for the tomorrow's webinar and my wish was would be to get the slides, if possible, and especially I'm interested in this facilitating ideation and innovation processes, and I learned a really much, uh, a lot, and there's a lot of summarizing for me to do to my group members regarding this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, and uh, we'll switch here to Becca. I'll try to be uh, quite short as well. What I liked was the framing within Kim's and Eros presentations so that they address the same issue a bit different way but not two different ways. And what I need is to elaborate the potential connections between the cases as according to this webinar they might exist even a broader extent than I, I have thought. And what I wish is to overcome the ICT barriers of the connectivity to this webinar we had before the, before the webinar. And, and what I learned was maybe that, that although the human-related issues in, in collaboration are commonly understood as, as, as important, they might be even more important. Thanks. Thank you, Becca, and we'll switch to cyber people. Kari? Hello, Kari. Remember to unmute. Hello. Hello, Renata. Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. I like the, the way researchers presented those many views to the problems in practice and how to how to learn from those. And what I was missing, perhaps, and what I think it's needed is is to more find out good practices. The best practices were missing uh, from my point of view. So that's what I also need. And and especially. If we think about the current situation and current business environment, what kind of business environment the best practices really come from? That's not necessarily the traditional industry. It can be something quite different environment where they are invented, how to say, how to collaborate. And what I learned, of course, because I'm not a researcher, was how to perform applied research in this area. And I think this group was very good and active in that sense. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Kari, and thanks again for your support at Tekes. And we'll follow with Ero here. Comparison of the different tools and features that that were present in this uh, all of these companies and cases, and I think there's more to think about the uh, implementation process uh, through human practices because it it seems to be always uh, a problem or it could be improved. And I learned some uh, local um, problems especially in China in the case, but, but then I understood also that, that the problems are quite specific to its, its country and I wish to learn other countries than China uh, better through some later cases. Hello, and we'll switch to Marco. Hello Marco, remember to unmute your mic. Hello, Marco. If not, we'll go to Henry Palonen. Hello, Henry. Looks like Henry left uh, for a second. Uh, and uh, we'll switch to Seppo. Hello, Seppo. Seppo Valley. Hello, everybody. Yeah, I hope you hear me. Yes. So, what I like to put it shortly, this uh, brilliant and nice topic and its challenges and, uh, and uh, let's say, potentials. And um, what I learned is, was that um, uh, in the company, still quite traditional tools are used and uh, basically separate tools for like data sharing for data sharing and then communication and uh, task based uh, collaboration which i uh, these tools i co call groupware and what i wish and need is is uh, their integration or linking uh, better than what is possible today and uh, this is shortly thanks Thank you, Seppo, and we'll switch here to Miria from uh, TechS Finnode Silicon Valley. Um, for me, I think I like the multitude of cases and companies and still having some kind of a red th uh, thread going through all of these, these cases, having sort of a similar, similar results. Um, also, the definition of various spaces was very, very interested and hopefully see a lot more studies done on that. What I would still need is um, I would like to see uh, going deeper in the human aspect of, of these different mechanisms. So for example, the last case mentioned that we need a, a sort of a mot motivational elements in there. So what would be those? That would be interesting to see. What I learned was what really I see in my everyday, my own life is that there are a lot of technological tools, but still we do things in a very very simple way using notebooks and emails and link thank you thank you very much Maria and uh, we'll switch to Petri here at Stanford what I li really liked about uh, the cases and, and the whole project was that we started with with somehow really different cases and and ended up to have some kind of similarities and then think that the compare and uh, I guess the kind of need is related to that we haven't had time for good kind of cross case analysis and that's at least from my opinion the kind of last last print to our our research project to combine and and, uh, and compare the cases and then uh, from research perspective I, I wish to continue with with kind of more in these kind of detailed case studies of, of uh, trying and taking new, new tools into use in, and new ways of working into use in, in companies because they really provide a, a 
a lot of valuable information and learnings. Thanks. Thank you, Petri. And uh, Tapio, are you there? Tapo, Tapio Risanen? Hello, Tapio, remember to unmute your mic. I will try again, Henry. Henry, are you there? Sounds like work-life balance challenges. Okay, uh, we'll go to uh, Oli here. So actually, I'll start with what I've learned. It's been really interesting to see the or hear about the different kinds of challenges that companies are facing. So as has been said a few times already, the cases that have been presented today are quite diverse. So it's also been interesting to see how these different companies actually try to come up with solutions to the problems that they're facing. And it seems that often the first idea is, hey, we need a new tool to solve this problem. But actually, when you dig deeper into the kind of the problem and the things behind it, often lots of things and reasons come up that don't have any, anything to do with the technology itself. So that's been really interesting, and it's been fun to learn about that. And um, I guess I wish, like many here today, to go beyond the individual cases to see what kinds of commonalities might be found. Personally, I also wish to investigate these well-being outcomes that were mentioned and thankfully i think i'll have the opportunity to do so in my next project thank you oli and uh who else is here arrow did we hear you yes we did uh Petri, we heard uh so let let me close and and share uh my four points i really liked uh the breadth uh of cases and uh finding uh, compl complementary aspects uh, among the cases uh, that takes me to the need. Uh, and uh, under need, I would like to see uh, all these cases and the findings grounded also in the literature uh, that supports many of the findings uh, that each of us uh, has uh, studied in these cases, as well as uh, do a cross-case analysis, and I guess that's our last mile of our project, to put our heads together and uh, link um, the data and, and these cases. I wish uh, that we would have had more time uh, to iterate, uh, to have longitudinal studies and more data points uh, in each uh, uh, setting uh, with each of our corporate um, uh, sponsors and partners, uh, more so um, as everyone is planning for new projects, it's very important to uh, integrate into the program, into the work plan, uh, the time needed to uh, connect, to identify the pilot teams, uh, and to set up uh, these cases. In, in, it's my feeling that we are at that point where we would be ready to go for another year to dig much deeper uh, and, and leverage our wonderful uh, working relationships that we established with our industry partners as well as across uh, researchers and across uh, the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, what I've learned uh, a little bit uh, more is this force space, the mental space, uh, and uh, really thinking about how hard it is to make that visible. Uh, and uh, use it to have better interactions uh, across disciplines and across cultures. Uh, and uh, that was kind of hinted by uh, many of the presentations uh, today. Uh, 
I want to uh, ask again everyone if uh, you would like to uh, say a couple of final words for today's uh, webinar uh, and give you back the floor. Uh, cyber people, any uh, comments uh, about today's uh, webinar, thoughts uh, that we can leverage for tomorrow? Okay, it's uh, very quiet. Probably time to go and have a nice dinner. I wish you a very good evening in Finland. And uh, we will see you tomorrow, same time, 8.30. Thank yeah, you thank so much. You for, thank you for good presentations. Thank you. And thank you for Renate. Nice, yeah, nice, Renate. nicely hosted. Thank, thank you, you very everybody. Much. Have a good thank evening. You. Yes, Bye. Same for you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.